What an awesome month it has been for Sony APS-C in terms of wide angle prime lenses specifically because back in the day we had very little to no options and now here we are with at least five good autofocusing ultra wide angle primes. And this one from Viltrox is going to make your decision as to which one to purchase that much harder. This is by far the best lens that Viltrox has ever released. And I'm excited to share this one with you guys today. Let's start by seeing how this thing comes packaged. It comes in a larger sized white box with a picture of it on the front. Inside you get a warranty card, user manual, microfiber pouch, and the lens. And just take a look at the packaging here because it sits in a nice thick bed of foam. There is a plastic front lens cap and a plastic rear lens cap, and it comes with a metal lens hood. This thing is all metal and glass. It's exceptionally well put together, and it feels better than a lot of the plastic lenses around this focal length. It's not overly heavy either, coming in at 418 grams. In terms of size, it's about two millimeters shorter than the Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4. Otherwise, they are nearly identical in size. Starting at the rear, there is a metal mount with electronic connections. This lens supports autofocus with an STM stepper motor that's inside. There's also a USB-C port back here for future firmware updates. No weather sealing though. Moving forward, there is an aperture ring here that is completely click-free up until you hit f16 and then there is a slight click over into auto. This aperture ring is electronic, however it's nice and smooth and well damped. You already know I'd rather have clicks, but that's just me. We have the lens specs engraved and painted here, an orange C logo and the Viltrox logo on the side. The bulk of the lens body is taken up by the focus ring, which is done very well. It's smooth in either direction and the resistance is nice and light. It is, however, just like the aperture ring, all electronic. Around the front, you have a nice sized convex front lens element with some lens specs here, 67 millimeter filter thread, and a minimum focus of 0.22 meters or 0.73 feet. As a package, it is a very nice lens. The fact that it is an all metal design sets it apart from the competition, which is all plastic for the most part. As a result, it feels more premium than the price on a camera such as the A6100. It looks good and it feels good on the camera. When Viltrox reached out to me regarding this lens, I was interested interested in reviewing, but I had my expectations set maybe low because they have been far exceeded and surpassed with the performance of this lens. So let's take a look at some sample photos. All of these are done with my Sony a6600, all straight out of the camera, no editing, no correction. <laughs> Let's start with the big stuff first, sharpness. Wide open, yes, this lens is remarkably sharp in the center of the frame and just a touch softer in the corners, but not even that soft wide open. The colors are rich and vibrant, contrast is excellent. The bokeh is also nice and smooth. The balls are circular even into the corners. A short minimum focus distance allows you to shoot with a great level of subject separation. This is a 13 millimeter that you're getting this amount of bokeh from. It's truly 
utterly incredible. In terms of distortion, it's strange how good it is. When you look through the viewfinder or the back of the screen on your camera, it looks like there is a lot of chromatic aberration, but then when you snap the picture and you zoom in, it's very well controlled. Now there is some, but it is by no means bad. Flare is also very well controlled. You don't really see it at all unless you are shooting directly into the sun, and it creates a kind of cool reddish reflection. It almost looks fake. With a flat subject, there is a little bit of barrel distortion, but not much, and the corners do have a bit of vignetting, which you can expect at f1.4. Okay, so this lens is sharp, it has great bokeh, and it has very little in the form of distortion, but really what puts this thing over the top is the autofocus performance, which is remarkably good as well. This is a third-party lens after all, but I felt like I was carrying around a native Sony lens. It was that good. 97% of the time, there honestly was not a single moment where I thought, wow, this autofocus is really struggling. However, 3% of the time, the only issue I've had with this lens is when you're shooting directly into the sun, and then it takes a few seconds for it to figure out focus, but then it's fine after that. For most normal shooting where you're not literally pointing the camera at the sun, you will be absolutely fine. The autofocus performance is excellent. The autofocus motor is quiet. It's accurate. It's quick, and so there's really nothing to complain about at all. Focus breathing is minimal, so if you are using this lens for video work, you won't be disappointed. Now normally when I review a third-party lens that is f1.4, it's a huge disappointment, unless it's from Sigma, but this Viltrox is an accomplishment. Everything about it, the design, the build, the optics, the autofocus truly is well done, and there really aren't any glaring shortcomings. Now I do think that Viltrox could improve this lens if they wanted to. They could start by adding some clicks to the aperture ring, they could add some weather sealing, that would be point number two, and if they really wanted to knock it out of the park, I think they should add optical stabilization because that would appeal to a huge pool of Sony APC users that don't have stabilized camera bodies. Uh, but even without those three things, this is an excellent lens and an excellent performer and an excellent value really for what you're getting for the money. And this lens does make things a little bit tougher for Sony APS-C shooters because not so long ago we didn't really have much of these options at all. And now look at here, we have an 11 millimeter, a 12 millimeter, a 13 millimeter, a 15 millimeter, and a 16 millimeter, all primes all pretty fast, f2 or better. So this makes for a pretty tough choice because all of these lenses here are pretty dang good. You can't really go wrong with any of them. I would say the Rokinon's probably the worst performer out of the bunch, but the rest of them are just spot on brilliant. But I like this Viltrox 13 millimeter lens a lot. It's very fun to use and definitely a very usable focal length. Now, if you guys want to read more about it or uh, check out pricing, this thing is currently on Indiegogo, uh, which is a great place to buy it because you can save quite a bit of money. Right now, the current price on this is $360 US. I think there are about 19 or so days left in the campaign, and that's a pretty decent savings over the Fuji mount versions, which right now are selling on Amazon for $429. So you're saving $69 bucks by buying it through the Indiegogo campaign. I would encourage you, if you guys are looking for a fast ultra wide prime, definitely put this thing on your shopping list, and I'm sure you'll be just as impressed as I have been with it. In fact, Fuji users have been raving all about this lens because Fuji, as you probably know, doesn't have quite the lens selection that Sony E-mount does. Uh, so this was a big, big thing and a breakthrough for them. And many reviewers were talking about how this lens is better than other native Fuji lenses on the market. So um, honestly, very little to complain about. And I am truly impressed with the performance, the build quality, the price, everything about this thing. And this is very exciting for Sony APS-C shooters because if Viltrox continues to do stuff like this, I'll have a bunch of them in my own personal collection. Um, and it's a good thing for all of us because competition breeds innovation, breeds choices, and then lower prices, and we all win at the end, hopefully. 
Um, so anyway, that is my review of this Viltrox 13 millimeter. Hope you guys enjoyed it and you learned something from it. Definitely check out the links down below if you guys are in the market for something like this. Uh, very, very usable lens. Also, subscribe and stay tuned for more because I have a three-way video comparison coming up with this lens versus a couple of the other ones, which I know you guys are going to be asking about in the comments. Uh, stay tuned for more. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.